Hello, this is Deb Joyce Meek from Delight of My Art. Today we're doing mystery stamping. We had a bit of a um, technical difficulties today, so I might not be able to see your comments, but I'll definitely watch later. We are live, and I did pre-record this video already, but that's okay because we are making swaps today for me. Um, if you are meeting with me at a convention in Okemos this week. Um, you might not want to look at this video until later, but if you're watching on the replay, thank you so much for tuning in and seeing how I made your incredible swap. I hope you were impressed enough to come back and watch this video. We do mystery stamping every single Wednesday. Um, well, almost every single Wednesday. I did take a break last week, but we're back with a bang. This one is super fun, and you can get the directions and the dimensions emailed to you if you join my email list in the description there. And then also this is posted in our Facebook group at Stamp with Delight. We are also live on YouTube at Delight of My Art. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let's go ahead and dive right in, and hopefully we have some people tuning in. Okay, so we have a card base here. I have Misty Moonlight. This is half a sheet of cardstock at four and a quarter by 11. And we're going to do a bunch of scoring on this. So pay attention, but it is also in the description here in the video and also on that description sheet. I will need my cutting arm out for my trimmer here. So I'm still in the view. It's a little bit hard to see with the setup that I have right now. I apologize, but hopefully you can see everything. So let's see, there's my trimmer blade. All right, so I have it on the 11 inch side and we're going to score at one inch on both of these ends to start with. Just makes it a little bit easier to do that short little score line on that right side of the trimming blade. We're also going to score down the middle here um, put the side of your paper here at four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half. So again, we did it one inch at each end, each end and then at four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half. Now we have let's see, three, four, five score lines here. So if we were to fold this in half, you would see that you'd have an inch score line on both sides um, of, the, of the card. Um, so we're going to put that back and turn it over because we're gonna do some more scoring. We're gonna do some zigzag folding and or some accordion folding. And it's a little bit easier if we score it properly um, with the, the direction of our scoring. So we have flipped it over. I scored on this side. I'm going to flip it over and we're going to score down the center of all of those one inch score lines that we already made. So don't worry, I will tell you the dimensions. We're at half an inch on this on each end. So that again will be right in the center of that other one that we did. So again, that's half an inch on both ends. And then if you put the left hand side, doesn't matter which side, at five and at six, that will put you directly in the center of those other ones. Five and six. Okay, so I think we can put the trimmer away. Thank you for being patient with me earlier. It took me probably a good half an hour to get everything. I had to recut everything because I, I already did this video, but that's okay. All right, so we do want a bone folder here because we're going to do a lot of burnishing on every single score line. So if you have a dent in your paper, you've scored into the paper, that will be a mountain fold. That will help you figure out which way to fold all of these. But all of the ones that we did that were an inch apart are going to be mountains. And then again, halfway our card folded in half is a mountain, right? Okay, so right now we have this thing that kind of looks like a little outhouse, right? <laughs> so now we can look at those other pieces and those will be um, folded the opposite direction. So. That will go that way. 
Let's see, the dent is on this side, so I'm going to make that like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll show you the shape at the end here. It will make a funny little... It should go back and forth in the middle. So we got a W in the middle. Can you see that? A W... And then you get two little V's on the side. Does that help? So as you have your W, put that W off to the left. And we're going to squeeze these two ends together and kind of squeeze it like this. So now you have kind of an, um, a little rectangle shape like that. And you want your opening on the right here. So we're going to put this down and open up the back off to the left. So if this, if this was our card, we want the front over here. Now we're gonna take that die that I had you get it was a three inch circle or square. I'm using the stylish shapes. I love these dies. If you don't own these already, definitely put it on your wish list. It die cuts both inside and outside or um, makes stitch marks on both the negative and the positive image that it cuts. So we're going to put that on this side over here. So if you have your little V's pointing up and your center ones pointing up, you're centered over here in the larger panel, evenly on the side, the top, and this other side. So you could center it, I guess, but I like to have it be centered or um, evenly spaced top and left and right so that I have a little bit more space down here to add some words. So I'm going to add some washi tape, and with the magic of TV, we're just going to pretend I already did that, like this. And you can save that piece that we cut out for another project. Okay, so now we have this piece here. Hopefully you're following along. Am I going too fast? What do you need to have repeated? So again, the score lines here, this is why we did all of our burnishing before we cut this, too is because it, um, the cut, having this cut out, it um, is a little bit more difficult to fold after it's cut. So we did the scoring first. But again, I'll just pull this back out real quick. This was an 11 inch piece by four and a quarter. And we scored it at one, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half and 10. And again, this is all in the description there too. And then we flipped it over and we scored it at half an inch, five and six and 10 and a half. So then we came up with this little W and little V's. I was going a little fast. I, I feel like I've done this already, which I have. <laughs> But that's okay. I'm sorry to go a little bit fast. All right, so here we have our little V's and our W in the middle. And then you just close that off to the right and then pinch it like this. Does that help? And then this is our front. So we're going to flip this over here and then die cut this panel over here. So that's where we are at the moment. I'll try to slow down. This is a little bit more of an intense one, but it's so worth it in the end, let me tell you. Okay, I was like leaping up and down with the things that I created today. I have three extra samples to show you besides this one. All right, so now we're here. We cut out that circle. It's really cute. We're gonna turn this whole thing over. So now our circle's on the left and we've got two little mountains now instead of valleys on the sides. We got two little mountains in the middle too. All right, so in this panel right here is where we're gonna put a background. And before I go too much further, I'm gonna give it away. We are making a shadow box card. Um, this matters because I want you to be able to put this together and add things in here before we close this up. So this will stand open like this and you'll have things in here but it will also lay flat to mail. So this is so cool. This is so cool. All right, so here we are. So 
as you hold this with the circle on the front, you should be able to see how that would go. So we'll just open that back up and this is the panel we're working on right now. This is the piece that would be the neutral three and a quarter wide by four inches tall. And um, you could also put DSP here. So I did add that to the directions here in the description. Um, but I did some stamping on mine using this new stamp set that came out today because our new catalog is out today. Very cute. Super cute. Very cute, I should say. There's a punch that matches this little bear here, and I'm using that today. But this is really cute. It's a cute new bundle available today. And I did do some sponging on the background, and I already showed in my other video how to do that but you didn't get to see that. So let me just real quick show you how I did the masking without actually doing much of the masking. I cut the, or I stamped this little bear again on a piece of post-it super sticky, which is sticky almost all the way to the edge. So I just stamped it right in the middle and then fussy cut him out, but I can reuse this cause it's, it's still sticky. So I stamped this bear while the card was blank and then I put this over the top of the bear. This is called masking, right? When my sticky note is on there, I just took some little scrap pieces of paper and where did my, I made a mask. So I took a little piece of paper and I just cut a little wiggly line on it. And then I took my, I just placed it wherever you can make any line you want. And then I took my sponge or my blending brush and I dipped it in the ink and then I kind of went off on some on some scrap paper before I added it right against this line here. So I just added that and then I took it off and I moved it a little bit and then we went over that line again and then we flipped it over because you can use both sides and we did it down there. And then I went back up to the top without re-inking. I re-inked every time I did those lines, but without re-inking, I just kind of went over again on the sky image or the, the upper part here. So just to give it a little bit more color. So now we're done with this whole panel and the bear stays nice and clean, but he has a snowy background. I just thought that was so cute. So we're just going to add this to the background here with some liquid glue. can see some comments, but it says Facebook user instead of your name. You've probably given StreamYard permission to use your name before, but it might need to do it again. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for making comments though. All right. So here's where we are at the moment. In this stamp set, we also have this adorable baby bear. Isn't it so cute? So here's where the extra fun part comes in. We're going to see where did my little piece go? We're just going to use a little strip of window sheet. And actually, this is a little thicker than I wanted, but that's okay. We're going to put it on the back here of our little baby bear. And I kind of want to make sure that I put this on straight. This bar needs to go straight with where his feet are. So this is a little hard to see because it's clear, but... Okay, so here is our little bear. And if you have adhesive on the back that you didn't cover up with your window sheet, you can take your embossing buddy, which is basically just cornstarch, I think, and just kind of lightly pounce that on anything that's still sticky because you don't want any sticky parts left. Okay, so here's our piece and it's too long. But we're going to add this to the edge here so that it kind of bounces back and forth. Ah, this is an interactive card and I love it. All right, so we're just going to add some seal on the edge here about where I want this little bear to go. So I, when this is folded in, we're going to accordion this in like this all the way. The farthest I want this little bear to go is right here. Let's just lightly tack that down and then when the card is flat he'll be over here actually want that over just a smidge which is fine right you can play around with this as the card is still open but once we seal those edges down you're kind of 
um, stuck a little bit. Okay, so here's how the furthest over it can go. All right, that looks cute. So I'm gonna stick that down right there and then trim off my window sheet here because it's too long. You don't have to have a floating element in your card. This is just like extra, this is all optional, but it's super cool and impressive. And it's not that hard. You just add a little strip of window sheet and that's it. So we're gonna add stamp and seal to this whole edge panel. And then one of these little valley sides because those are gonna stick together. So you really only need to do one of those. All right, so we'll add this whole edge. So that whole edge right there. And then something in the middle here. So we've got one, two, three, four little strips, one of those middle ones. If you wanted to add an element floating off from the left, you would do this before you cut or before you close this, but it's a little bit trickier to do it on this side because of there's no edge to, you know, cut off your edge of your window sheet. So you just have to really guess a little bit better that way, but it can be done. And then you'd probably want to add it on this side so it can, you could float it. So I would say if you are experimenting then, having these edges right here straight up and down with the bottom. So it's like a little table like this is how you want that to kind of, that's, that's where your image kind of lands. So when you have it open, it's a little bit off to the sides. And then when you close them up, they get further in towards the center. So I'm not sure if I, that, that's making any sense. Anyway, um, don't worry about making any extra little little bits. Okay, so let's go ahead and close up this center piece. We're just going to pinch that one. Pinch. So now we have this little tab over here like that. Now we're just going to lay this whole thing flat like this, and we're going to close up this side by laying the whole thing flat. So we're just going to since we did our burnishing already. There, the whole thing is flat now. We're putting, pinching those sides and it should just pop up like this together. Isn't this so cute? Mommy. <laughs> it's so fun. All right, so here's my banner piece. I stamped warm wishes on there. <clears throat> and I do want to add some of the coordinating ribbon that went with this strip. Look at this, it's fuzzy and sparkly. It's so soft. So I'm going to take three pieces. Oops. Got window sheet on me. I'm going to take three little pieces of this. Again, I'm making this for swaps. So I'm using this sparingly so that it lasts for as many swaps as I can do. And so I've got these little pieces here and I want to create a little V to mimic the edge here because I want to add it just sticking out at the edge right here. Can you see that? All right, so I'm going to add some seal to the edge here and then just stick that on to add that like that. Cute. And then since these are kind of bulky, it's almost like a mini dimensional, like a a thick, they're, it's kind of a thick ribbon. So what I'm actually going to do is use this little piece like a dimensional. I should put it farther away. I should use a smaller piece actually, because I can. I'll just put that there. I'm just using that as a dimensional. We're going to add adhesive to the back of the ribbon and then put it on the card. So here, And we can push that flat again, because we can. And then our two strips of DSP go on the edges here. And that's why they're so ridiculously skinny. <laughs> I love this pattern. This is another coordinating pattern with this Berry Christmas suite. And there's three of these cute little sweatery patterns in this paper pack blue, green, and red little sweater patterns. Here's one of them. 
this one. So pretty. All right, and I'll go ahead and add this piece over here. Let me know if you're loving this or if, if this intimidates you. I think you can do it. It is a little bit intimidating, but I think you can do it. So we do have one more cute little bear. This is the bear with the punch, and I added his cute little scarf on there. So stinking cute. We'll just add him with some dimensionals. Two of those. Stick him right there. Put the lid on my glue. And we want to add some embellishments too. This was also in the same suite, the Berry Christmas suite. And I'm just going to add some of these. These are called, if I could turn the whole thing over, adhesive backed glitter sequins. So I'm just going to add the blue ones here. And there is our card. Again, this is called a shadow box card. And this was the our first option with the little bear going to its mom. I thought that was really cute. All right, so there's the first one. I did actually do this one in navy also, but I did another swap in navy and I used up all my navy cards. So I can't, I couldn't do my swaps in the navy, but I actually think I like the Misty Moonlight better. Anyway, that wasn't one of my extra three that I wanted to show you. So let me show you card number two, I guess. You have to let me know which one's your favorite. This one's using trucking along, again in Misty Moonlight. So I thought that was funny. This little tree is from the Zany Zoo dies, which fits perfectly in that little truck, I thought. So I just added a few extra ones to kind of mimic that green over there. I thought that one turned out really cute. You get your little truck zooming along and that snowy scene in the background with a nice Merry Christmas there. This Merry Christmas is actually from the bear set. So there's two. Oh my goodness, you guys are going to flip out. All right. So I'm going to stand up so I can see any comments. All right, so here's the third card, and I think this one's so cute. All right, this one is using the new autumn paper, and we've got the little birds there, and the glasses go right on. <laughs> so the glasses go right on the bird. I stamp them right on the window sheet and stays on and then colored the bird with um, blends with memento. So the bird is on a little window sheet, but the glasses are on the left hand side. So when you push the sides together, his little glasses go on. Isn't that so cute? So the ribbon here is part of that autumn suite. This is the leaf, the one with the leaves, I think, autumn leaves. And this paper has copper foiling on the back side of all of these realistic um, leaves and books and things. It's such a pretty pack. It's actually already um, on back order, not back order, but on un unorderable, but it will be back next week. So if you got a paper share, um, I have to wait a week to order that because it was so popular. But I thought that one was really cute. Okay, so there's that one. And then this one was even <laughs> it's so fun too. So this one is a Halloween card using the bag of bones. This is another new stamp set. And he dances. Isn't that so cute? Looks like he's slapping his knee. Oh, you yeah. do, 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 do. <laughs> Just looks like he's he needs the little cowboy hat. There's actually a cowboy hat and cowboy boots in the, the die set and this one. So the no bones about it. You're a sweet friend. This paper actually glows in the dark. And so do these little bats. And if you can see, they're even kind of iridescent when they're not in the dark. But let me show you how this looks um, in the dark, just a second. So I have a black light here, which will help you see kind of that it glows a little bit green. But when I turn the lights off, hang on. Echo, turn off stamp room. Oh, there's my lights, okay. So let's see if it worked. So here it is glowing in the dark. Isn't that cool? All right, so I'll turn my lights back on. Thank you so much for watching. Echo, turn on stamp room. Got my